Good afternoon. Good afternoon to everybody. I hope everybody's doing wonderful this Saturday afternoon. I'm just getting on here to really release and 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 uh relegate and a downloaded revelation that I think every believer, anybody that is desiring to be used effectively in the body of Christ needs. If you go to John chapter 4 and verse 24, uh, you will see a tremendously powerful scripture. And as you'll see, the title of this broadcast is The Word and the Spirit. Well, in John chapter 4, in verse 24, it says this. And I'm going to read this of the King James. I'm not, I'm not going to take up much of your time, but I just want to give you a revelation real quick. John 4 and 24 says, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The first thing that we get out of that is God is a spirit being. Okay? We know that we are spirit beings. We are spirit beings. We have a soul and we live in this body. This is not the real us. We live in this body as spirit beings and we have souls. But this body, when it leaves, the real us. When this body dies, the real us leaves. Okay? And depending on who we gave our soul to depends on our destination. If it's going to be heaven or hell. But God is a spirit and just like God, we are a spirit. So, they that worship God must worship Him in spirit and in truth. So that means that we can't worship God out of a fleshy perspective. We have to worship God out of a spiritual perspective. But notice that it says spirit and truth. Which means that it's not just enough to worship Him out of your spirit man, but you have to worship Him out of truth. Well, what is the truth? The truth is the Word of God. If you go to John chapter 17, if you go to John chapter 17, you see that the word truth clearly defined as the word of God within the prayer of Jesus. If you look at verse 17, it says this, Sanctify them through thy truth, thy word is truth. So, the way that we worship God is through spirit and truth, or the word. So that means that it's very important when you worship God to have a complete combination of the spirit and the truth. The spirit of God represents uh, prayer, represents the anointing, represents the, the realms of glory, uh, worship, adoration, praise, all that is uh, included within a spirit worship. But then you have truth worship or the word worship, which is based off of confession, med meditation, obedience to the word of God, uh, reflection on the word of God, teaching on the word of God, uh, and abiding in the word of God. And that is more so a consciously based uh, oriented type worship. When you combine the Word and the Spirit of God, then you get an explosion. You get an explosion. The disciples, they clearly understood this. We like to talk about Acts chapter 2 when the Spirit came, but one thing that you have to recognize is that the Word had to be established first. Well, you say, how, that is, how, is, how is that the case? Well, if you go to Acts chapter 1 verse 8, it says, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea, and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. We see that the promise of the Holy Spirit is given. But once the promise of the Holy Spirit is given, the disciples understood that it must be, must be very important for us to foundationalize this promise and give this promise a landing strip to land on. See, the Spirit of God needs a landing strip. And the landing strip that the Spirit of God needs is the Word. This is why one cannot go without the other. If you read on to this, it says in verse 13 uh, of the same chapter, verse 1, uh, These all continue with one accord in prayer and supplication with the woman and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. So they were in prayer. They were in prayer. And uh, I forgot what it said, but um, let's see, let's see, let's see. There's a scripture that also indicated that not only were they in prayer, but they actually were also in the practice of actually reading the word and the scripture is being explained and for some reason I can't find that scripture I want to say it's in Luke just give me a minute real quick but I want to show you here that uh, their worship level was not just praying and trying to engage or gauge the spirit but they also made sure that they utilized the word of God as a mechanism and as the method and as the main foundation upon which and by which their worship was based because they understood 
That the only way that the Spirit of God can come in its fullness and in the reality of who He is is based off of the Word of God. The confession of the Word of God, the foundation of the Word of God, and the release and manifestation of God's blessed Word. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. I believe it's in... I'm going to look at Luke 24 real quick and be able to see if this is where... Uh, yes, thank you, Holy Spirit. Verse 27. And actually, Jesus did this. Jesus did this. The word was established through Jesus. Here's what it says. Uh, I believe this is... No, no, no. That's not it. I'm sorry. Uh, verse 45. Jesus appeared to him. Then he opened... Then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures. Okay? So the foundation of before anything happened... Before he even made the promise of you're going to receive the Holy Ghost in Luke chapter 24 verse 45 was the scriptures. Once the scriptures was done, the promise was made and now the foundation of the word was laid. Now all they had to do was pray. Once they prayed, that's when in Acts chapter 2, the Bible talks about and when the day of Pentecost was come, uh, 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 suddenly they heard a sound from, as a rushing mighty wind, came from heaven, filled the whole house where they were saying, cloven tongues of fire, smoking tongues as the spirit gave utterance. So what am I saying? I am saying that this is the way that you get to God's presence. You never start off your worship without a word base. Because if you start off your worship without a word base, then you're going to pray amiss. You're going to pray wrong. You're going to pray out of your emotions and out of your flesh. Everything that you do must have a basis and a background and a foundation in the word of God. Once the word of God has become that basis and that background and the foundation and the plumb line, then the spirit of God has an area and has a rim and has a dimension and has a... A, a, a place, a room to be able to come and dwell. Okay. Okay. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. Okay. Yes. We see that in John chapter 1. We can go to John chapter 1. We'll see it in the life of Jesus. We'll see it in the life of Jesus. It's very important to have the word and the spirit. We're going to see in the very same chapter, we're going to see the word and we're also going to see the spirit. Watch this. See, I, I like showing stuff like this because it's going to revolutionize your prayer life. It's going to revolutionize your prayer life. You cannot get the fullness of God just praying. And you can't get the fullness of God just reading the word alone. Both must come together. Verse 1, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Okay, we know that. Verse 14, and the word was made flesh. Jesus became the flesh of the word of God. The very word. This word right here put on skin, and that was called Jesus. Amen? The word became flesh as a living word and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory is of the be only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. But then, if you look all the way down, I believe, uh, if you go down, actually, it's in John chapter 3. If you go down, um, well, actually, John chapter 1 says the same thing. You see the word in the very first few verses, but then John chapter 1 verse 32 shows that the Spirit of God was also present after the baptism. This is why it's very important. He had the word, but he had to get baptized for the spirit to come on that word so he could be manifested in kingdom power and do the kingdom assignment that he was called to do. And John, when he got baptized, bear record saying, I saw the spirit of God descending up from heaven like a dove and it abode upon him. Okay. And really, when the spirit hit the word, that's when Jesus was able to start off his ministry. And that's when he said in Luke chapter four, if we go there, that's when he said, this is what he said. Because the word was already established. He was just waiting on the spirit to come. This is why it was very important for Jesus to get baptized. Because the spirit of God was not going to come upon Jesus until he got what? Baptized. Okay. John chapter 4. That's when he says. That's when he says after he got baptized. He went and he fasted. And then verse 1 says. And Jesus being full. I'm sorry. He, he got fast. He, he got the Holy Ghost. And then he, 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 after he got baptized he got the Holy Ghost. And he fasted, blah, blah, blah. Then after he fasted, he came back, full of the power and of the Holy Ghost, okay? And he said this. He said this in verse 18. B before I go there, the first verse of uh, chapter 4, and Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. So now we see in John 1 where he's the Word. Then we see after the baptism then he's the Spirit. John saw the Spirit descending upon him like a dove. He went on fast. After he went on a fast, he came back. And then he stated, because now the word and the spirit has come together. Now he's walking in power. 
Now he's anointed. The word of the Spirit has produced an anointing. And he declares, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because what? He hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, the recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And that's when he begins to release the miracle working power of God. And he says even in verse 21 of chapter 4 of Luke, and he began to say unto them, this day is a scripture fulfilled in your ears. So you see, this is very important that the word and the spirit comes together. We see even in chapter 3 that the level of the spirit of God was immeasurable. It was without measure. Because the Bible says in verse 34, For he whom God has sent speaketh the words of God. Okay, here's the word. He speaketh the word of God. Here's a word. But guess what else happened? For God giveth not the spirit by measure unto him. So we see the word and the spirit. The spirit of God came without measure. Okay, so it's very important that you have a strong word life and a strong uh, spirit life. That you engage God through the venue of worship by the word and also through the spirit. You understand what I'm saying? Okay, word first, spirit second. Remember that. Word first, spirit second. The spirit moves upon the foundation of the word. Okay, and the spirit also gives the, uh, the believer or the hearer. The ability to be conditioned to keep the word that they have received and to maintain that word because the spirit is the Holy Spirit who is the teacher and he's there to reveal and to unlock hidden mysteries and truths that God wants to give and God wants to release to his people and through them to the earth realm. Amen. We even see here in Acts chapter 6 verse 5. I talked about this the other day. Acts chapter 6 and the fifth verse says, uh, I believe, uh, they, uh, let me get that real quick. Acts chapter 6 and the 5th verse says, actually, I'm sorry, verse 4, but we'll give ourselves continue to pray into the ministry of the, uh, uh, of the word. Okay. So they understood the importance of engaging God through spirit worship, through prayer and worship, and also through word worship, through, uh, 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 uh meditation, confessing, teaching, declaration, and prophetic unction okay so this is very very important that we both combine the word and the spirit why is it important there is two camps in the body of Christ you have churches that just focus only on the word of God and they are excellent at teaching the word of God they're excellent at, 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 uh, at declaring the word of God and they're commonly known as word, word of faith churches not generally stigmatizing the word of faith movement but a lot of those churches their main uh, 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 focus and their mo their main motivation is just teaching the word of God, understanding Greek, Hebrew, exposition, exegeting, not trying to eisegete, understanding homiletics and homiletics, understanding the dispensations of time, understanding scriptural prophetic patterns and tapestries and cycles, understanding the background, historical culture, understanding uh, what applications the word has for today. Then you have all the way on the other side, you have the spirit churches. That all they are worried about is the spirit. They are very obsessed with the tongues and the glory. They understand dimensions and portals. They understand supernatural acts, manifestations, miracles, uh, signs and wonders, creative miracles, the glory of God, the attributes of the spirit of God, the realm of the spirit, the demonic kingdom, witchcraft, fighting it, uh, combating spiritual back badness, spiritual warfare, all these different things they understood. But what the Spirit of God wants us to do is to combine that and that and bring it together. You want to be in a church that emphasizes the Word and the Spirit. You want to be in a church that is completely balanced in Word and Spirit. Okay, And you want to practice that on an individual level as well. Here's why. Because if you end up in a church that is just all about Word, then you'll have knowledge, but you will have no deliverance, no breakthrough, no healing, no salvation, no elevation, no manifestation. If you're in a church where it's just all about spirit, then you will end up being prone to being deceived. You will end up being prone to going too far and walking into apostasy, heresy, mysticism, and false spiritualism. Thinking it's God, but it's not God. It's coming from another source. So the spirit churches need the word of God for discernment and guidance. And not to be ignorant and make the same mistakes over and over again, but to know how to flow in the things of God. And the word churches need the spirit so that they won't just talk something and not be able to produce it and manifest it. So I declare unto you, those that are watching this Periscope this afternoon, this evening, to get the word and the spirit. They that worship him must worship him in spirit 
and in truth. Sanctify them because thy word is truth. Be blessed and be happy. Make sure that you change your worship life today and watch what God do. In Jesus' name, amen. Bye-bye.